below us. So I'd say those four years, we actually grew up with, like I hung out with Ty Ver and he was way younger than me, but there were a few folks that kind of everybody knew. It was probably because of baseball and because of all the things that we did and ski team and all that stuff that you sort of knew some of those folks, you know what I mean? They were the ones oh, yeah. looking up to you or you were looking up to them kind of a thing, you know? Well, some of the people, so in my class and in the class in front of me were, would be like Jonathan Wright, uh -huh. who um, was quite well known for his um, expeditions in the Himalayas, which is where he also died in an avalanche. And mm -hmm. Steve Jenkins, who was quite well known um, for the, on the football team, he was just an awesome person on the football team. He was our football star. And um, Nick DeVore, who became a National Geographic uh -huh. uh, photographer. And um, and then there were a lot of people that, there was a group of people that went up to Virginia City um, in Montana, I think it is. And they all kind of bought places up there. And that would have been John Morningstar and uh, Jay Cowan and who was also, Jay Cowan was Hunter Thompson's caretaker for many, many, many years. Oh yeah. I was John Denver's caretaker for many years. Oh, cool. And um, so, you know, we just had all these wonderful experiences with people that would come to town and live there. And um, there was Ray Taylor and Don Newberry and, you know, all of their parents, of course, worked for the city of Aspen in different, uh, like in the treasurer's office and the assessor's office and um, so we had, and then there was Jody Cadill was in my class and she and Tom Cardamone started, um, helped Elizabeth Pepke start ACES. Oh. They were the people who were in charge of ACES for many, 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 many years. They lived there and um, really started all the programs and um, were instrumental in preserving lots of land like Ashcroft, you know, raising the money to buy Ashcroft from the Ryans when they sold it. And, um, oh, and I, and the Mace, the Maces, Stuart yeah. Mace. Stuart, well, yeah. his kids were in my class. One of his kids and one of the kids was just right below, Bruce and Kent. Uh -huh. And um, gosh, I'll, I'll probably think of more people as <laughs> the time goes on here. <laughs> There's well, so many, so many names and so many people that all of us have in common, even though, we span different generations, basically. Uh, that yes, was the Jody, name. Jody Caudill and Sam Caudill and Clappers. And Clappers. Clappers. Yeah, Mason. I mean, that's I, interesting. I think. Well, how I want to say Benedicts too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, they actually lived across the street from us, so we would uh, we would always go out and try to help catch uh, Fabi's. Uh, macaw whenever it got away or parrots or whatever <laughs> he had so she'd be yelling at him yelling at, yelling at him in the trees yeah and they would just yell back at her it was funny but i, I, um, I remember hunter had a peacock and willie's had a peacock oh yeah i want to say i want to say judy that my mom probably ended up working with your dad at the red onion i she she was a bartender there for uh, a, a time and i'm i'm not really sure of the years uh -huh. But that's right about when she came to town, too. So it's possible. Well, there was a picture of my mother at the um, Red Onion with Billie Holiday singing on the stage. Oh, me. wow. Cool. I yeah, saw a picture of Billie was... Holiday outside of the oh. Red Onion. That would be an awesome picture to see. I would love to see that. I, you know, I've tried to track it down. But, you know, there's that wonderful po uh, picture of Billie Holiday with her skis over yeah. her shoulder standing in front of the red onion yeah yeah that's what i'm thinking of fabulous picture and patrick henry's father patrick henry senior took that picture yeah. and yeah so i used it in the book that i helped to publish recently so it, it's a it's just classic and they used to have um, these wonderful um jazz you know concerts at the red onion so when I was a little girl, my mother and father would take me to the Red Onion and I'd sort of hide under the tables. And there would be the most famous jazz musicians. Louis Armstrong played there. And it was really? quite a wonderful um, gathering. 
most of the people in Aspen at that time loved jazz music. And it was even before say, um, Gibson started his jazz. Well, the Red Onion, when I was there, the Red Onion was still one of those little local places that had stuff. I remember when Gary Hart came to college, started this big thing about going through Colorado and trying to become, you know, run for president. And Red Onion was where he came and did one of his big sort of announcements that he was going to run. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's when Werner Kuster owned it. Yeah. And Werner had, you know, both sides. There was the old side, the original yep. Red Onion. Yeah. And then there was the newer one that they built. Yeah. And uh, that was the fancy side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see, Walt Smith used to play there, too, uh, with like uh, Harold Whitcomb and I can't remember who else, maybe even... Uh, Dr. O'Dane or somebody, but I do remember that they ended up years later playing at the Sopras down Valley. So my mom would go to that.